Hi, I'm Jill Galloway. I'm an artist educator at the National Portrait Gallery. In today's open studio lesson, we're looking at squiggly line art. So what is squiggly line art? It's just like it sounds. It's art made with scribbles and squiggles rather than straight lines. What I'm trying to get you to do is let go of worrying about making perfect lines and just have a good time. This truly is a lesson that everybody can do and everybody can be successful at. We'll start out with something really simple and then at the end of the video I'll give you some ideas of how you can take this lesson a few steps further. Okay, let's get started. The supplies you'll need for today's lesson are just a pencil and some paper. You don't need any erasers today. Also a sharpie and maybe some watercolor paints if you have them. Step one in making squiggly art is learning how to make a squiggle. A squiggle looks like this. Not this, this. We want to be crazy here, not organized. Let go of the line. Let's try a simple bird. Like anything else we draw, we start with simple shapes. An oval body, a round head, and a triangle beak and tail. The legs are just two little sticks with V's at the bottom. If you have a Sharpie, use it now. If not, continue with a pencil or a crayon or a marker and squiggle over the shapes. If you're thinking about value or shading, you'll add more squiggles closer together in the areas that would be in shadow. So if I put a little sun up here in the corner and the light is shining down on the bird's head, the underside of him will be darker. Now let's try a pine tree. When you work on the trunk, it will be thicker at the base and thinner at the top. If you're working with children, make two marks at the bottom for the tree trunk width and a dot at the top of the tree. Starting at the bottom, squiggle up to the top, getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Now add branches. On my tree, the branches angle straight out and are thick at the bottom. And as they move up the tree, they begin to angle up and get thinner. Remember, crazy lines. Also, not symmetrical, meaning equal on both sides. Yes, some trees are like that, but let's see if we can have the branches vary. If you want to take this a step further, you can splatter down some watercolors or add a background. In this one, after the tree was drawn with permanent marker, I soaked the paper in tea. Different teas will stain the paper different colors. Soak it overnight and lay it out to dry, leaving some of the tea on the paper for texture. Now try this technique with people or animals as the subject. Here's an example of a portrait done by an open studio artist. I wasn't sure if we had any squiggly art in our collection, so I went to the National Portrait Gallery website, and in the portrait search section of our homepage, I typed in the word sketch. So much great art popped up, like this piece titled Nine Pencil Sketches of Robert Lee Frost from 1955. Also this portrait of Charles de Gaulle from 1962. Practicing in this loose style like this will really help your art. If we always worry about making perfect lines, we sometimes lose the energy in our sketches. So keep practicing your squiggly lines and let's see what you come up with. Post it on your social media with the hashtag MyMPG. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time.